batch for graduate <laughs> okay so vinyam is a batch for graduates and uh, he really did well for this specific challenge and i understand he's also working with the same kind of data and that's why we thought it best to actually have him come back share with us his understanding of the project maybe how he approached it and how just how it is working with the same kind of um the same kind of data in the industry now so i'll just hand over to vinium and uh, he can take us through just over to you vinium uh thanks uh, anastasia <clears throat> uh hello everyone uh, i'm excited to be here uh, to be presenting what i know and how i implemented the causal inference uh yeah so let me know when to start anastasia I think you can yeah. just start. The ones who are late, they'll get to see their recording. You can just start. Ah, okay. So I think later if I start uh, presenting. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. <clears throat> can you see my screen? I can. I hope they can as well. Yeah, they can. Perfect. Uh, so this is a, like a tutorial, yeah, kind of tutorial on causal inference. Uh, so uh, I have like planned to give this part as uh, uh, as four sessions. The first session, so I'll introduce myself. And I'll provide you, like, I'll give you a high level introduction about causal inference. Uh, maybe it might be a little bit repetition, but to some use cases that I you know are, are good to give you. And uh, thirdly, I'll be demonstrating uh, on causal inference implementation on a real data, uh, which I'll be showing you uh, shortly so that you can kind of have an idea on how to implement. Uh, causal inference for the project that you are currently working on. And uh, there are not that much uh, of big tips, but I'll be providing you some tips uh, as to how you can tackle the challenge. Uh, so yeah, uh, let me start my self introduction here. Uh, my name is Bini Amsisai, I'm from Ethiopia. Uh, I graduated from Addis Ababa University. I'm an electrical and computer engineer. Uh, I joined the academy in the last batch, and I'm excited to be like <laughs> going in this uh, machine learning and data engineering journey. Uh, yeah. So, uh, on my work experience, I can tell you that I have worked uh, at APHI or a public housing institute here in Ethiopia. Uh, as a machine learning engineering and I was able to do some research on the data that they have and provide some insights and kind of extract things. And so I worked there for around five months and I'm currently working as a data engineer at a company called Arludio. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's me. Uh, you, you may be like uh, going in the same path for the future. That's why I'm kind of like trying to say, uh, telling you. So uh, let me jump into the high level introduction about causal inference. Uh, causal inference, uh, as you know, is a term that is used like the process for the process of determining whether an observed association truly affects uh, cause and effect relationship. Uh, the problem with the ordinary machine learning approach is that uh, Correlations does not uh, does not necessarily imply causation, and the correlation might be uh, due to like some random chance. Now let me give you a context or an example here. Uh, so let's say you have uh, you're working on a skin uh, cancer data, uh, and in that skin cancer data, uh, most of the, the the like the patients uh, have an, a history of working or like exercising. Now you may, uh, based on like a classification model, uh, like the feature importance or any other thing might tell you that the 
exercising might cause uh, skin cancer and you may go to this kind of generalizations. And this has uh, like uh, a big impact in kind of like when you think of it as in, in the health sector, uh, it will be coming to uh, bad, bad generalizations. And the second, the second thing is uh, we are prone to be having like a limited data, which is a most probably a cross-sectional data, and in this case scenario, a randomized uh, control trial. And the, the, and the like the problems uh, here can be stated like it's unethical to follow up uh, the the patient or the person, like let's say a person is smoking cigarette or. Yeah, he's a, uh, he's a smoker and he just can't go there and ask him to stop smoking so that you can collect or so that you can uh, see the effects of not smoking uh, cigarette can cause like can minimize cancer or not. Same way as you cannot ask a person to start smoking and kind of see what smoking can cause uh, cancer and etc. You don't have data for that. Uh, you, what you can do is you can just randomly go and collect data. Uh, are you a smoker? When did you start smoking? And blah, blah, things. But that doesn't still uh, give you that historical thing. And even if you want to kind of uh, uh, collect that data, it's going to be uh, extremely resource intensive. But like lots of money will going to be billions of dollars maybe uh, might be invested to, to only collect this data. And even uh, if you manage, if we if we manage to collect that data, uh, we still can't be sure of the compounding factors that may be uh, arriving in between, like the process of uh, starting the the, the, the the collecting the data and to the final end. So uh, I have kind of uh, put here a scenario as to how the classical machine learning limitation can be simulated. Now we may have a patient, let's say X, with age, uh, age at diagnosis, uh, and uh, is he a smoker or not? Uh, when did he start smoking? Educational stats of the person, the BMI level, and if he is like uh, having a treatment uh, of cancer or uh, etc. And we can have an output, uh, an, an outcome variable or Y as an age at cancer, uh, age at this due to cancer. Uh, for this case, just assume this as a classification problem. You are just going to classify if you, the person is going to pass age of 60 or not, or 70 or not. Now, you can have classification models, such as like logistic regression, random forest, GBoost, um, deep learning, MLP, to do these things. Uh, uh, hello, can you, you can hear me, right? I just continued. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, uh, the limitations uh, on this martial learning is that uh, we all we do not need only just a classification. Uh, okay, I have these things. So this person will die or not? That's not the 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 the, the thing that most of the especially the public the public institutes want. What they want is how can I intervene and change the lives of lots of people, uh, like by adding some, I don't know, some kind of interventions. And then the, the next problem is of course, or the next limitation is of course, correlation is calculated via like using the classical machine learnings, correlation is calculated via covariance. And this may be uh, very misleading as I've told you on the skin cancer uh, scenario. And the third thing is it's difficult to add uh, experts opinions. Uh, now let's say here we have age at diagnosis and that age uh, at diagnosis may affect the, treat the treatment type. We may, we may get it via like the correlation, but uh, that still does not have like, does not show the, the, the entire story. And lastly, it's challenging to kind of simulate uh, the, the the results of joint effects, uh, like having had a person be diagnosed at a later age or at early age, 
then the treatment type would have been changed and having, having that uh, different treatment type what would have been the age uh, at least due to cancer and also it's challenging to to answer the, the the intervention questions now the solution to like the scenario that i've told you earlier is we will have the same data the cross-sectional data there and then we will uh, provide it to an inference engine now this inference engine i'll like i'll show you the, the process via the notebook that i'll be presenting later so we'll be providing it uh, for an inference engine and then this inference engine would kind of uh, come up with the age of uh, the age of days due to the cancer and the thing the different thing that we can do here is that we can assist and modify the relationship via like expert opinions the structures we can modify them via the expert opinions or anything that we want uh, and then we can <clears throat> apply like Bayesian networks and conditional probabilities so that we can see the the joint effects of like one thing over the another and the other over like the target variable and lastly we can do or apply uh, do interventions here and so that we can see the, the the having treatment type of a would change the entire populations uh, age at this due to cancer would be increased or not i don't know if that make uh, that makes clear but this is as far as like how i understand it uh, so if you have any questions uh, let me know here before like jumping into implementation of sample yeah uh yeah thank you uh I wanted to ask just how do you choose the confounder variables uh, when it comes to like for example over here in your particular data set how, how do you go about choosing your confounder variables like what did you put into consideration mm. well this is like based on uh, mostly based on the experts opinion uh, we have selected but you can use some algorithms if it is like uh, noticeable and if it's something that you can see by research or any research papers uh, you can of course go there and do your justifications and come up with that this thing is affecting this thing or you can you can have a mathematical formula or anything that can provide uh, an evidence on something is a confounding factor for another thing but for my specific case i used uh, notice algorithms that i'm going to be showing you later on uh, but on the real on the actual project uh, i have also added the, 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 the like people's idea or like the expert opinion so maybe in your project you can uh, you, you can basically do uh, notice algorithms or you can also further investigate in the, 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 in the internet that the, something is confounding factor of another thing. I don't know if that makes sense. Hello. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 I'm, under, I'm trying to understand you. Okay, uh, do we have another question from anyone? Okay, uh, okay, Tadessa. Okay, uh, thank you, Biniam. Uh, we are happy having you here. So my question is just uh, when we see causal inference, is it we going to infer uh, the, the things that cause for some output just by using uh, uh, some algorithm or by developing some program or is it uh, about visualization the uh, causal inference uh, probabilities just having some of the uh, co-founding variables uh, 
Okay, so now as I've told you earlier, uh, especially on HALS uh, related uh, projects, you'll be asked to kind of get what if, like what if we have done this thing, what would have been the, 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 the outcome of, or how would the population cha have changed uh, and et cetera things. So, like for the projects that have implemented, causal inference has been like, I was uh, able to do some interventions, like implement some interventions, and I was able to kind of see uh, how much percentage of uh, dead people or how much how much percentage of dead people could have been saved had there been like this kind of implementation. Uh, yeah, I mean, it may not make uh, like a very big sense right now, but uh, like when we go to the core base, I think it will be clear. And of course, uh, like the visualization part is part of it, since it's going to be like the network will be doing this structure. This is one of the things, the, the problems it is having this structure and this structure uh, is also part of the visualization. Does that make sense? Perfect. Okay, so I think we can kind of go to the, the, the to the project and I'll be showing you there. Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, for this specific project, I used the um, causal links library, which was developed by McKinsey. Uh, so it had around six parts. We can actually classify it into five parts. Uh, of course, the first part being some of the, the basic important simple idea, which I think in your project you can incorporate and kind of extend your potential on exploring multiple different kinds of ideas yeah, upon you can uh, upon which you can do. Uh, the second thing is uh, formulation of the causal graph, like generation of the structure that I've told you or that I've shown you earlier. That's going to be the second part. And thirdly, we'll give we'll be providing that 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 graph to a Bayesian network and kind of uh, have values for the for the for the age uh, so that it can predict for us. That's the final goal. Well, that's not actually the final goal, but that's something that we want. And if we kind of agree uh, on the quality of that network. Uh, like the, on, on, of course, you have, uh, you know, what the matrices of some model should be. So, if we agree on that, uh, we can provide that Bayesian network to an inference, uh, an inference engine, which was developed the, the same in the same library, and then kind of apply, do interventions or uh, do calculus. So, this is like the general, the entire thing. Uh, so I can let me go uh, with the first step. This is the uh, data that I had. Uh, it had around 12, 22 columns. Uh, and the data is, let me give you a, a little bit introduction about the data. It's, uh, uh, it's a has related data. The demo, uh, it's called the demogra demographic health survey. Yeah, and the specific one was for Ethiopia, so it's called EDHS. So it has around uh, 1,300 columns or more than that. So we have to kind of narrow, no, narrow it down to around 22 columns or 22 features. And this was of course done by the, the, the expert opinion, uh, by the experts which I was working with. So uh, this is just uh, the, the renaming the columns and I removed uh, some of the columns, and of course you can remove uh, some of the columns that you are working uh, with. So that, like, let's let's take six as uh, one like one example here. Uh, you can you cannot intervene or you cannot change uh, six. 
it's not something that we can do it that we can do. so what so this it's unnecessary to put it in the the, the network that you are, that you have so but of course if you feel like the column or the the the, the, the attribute is mandatory for the structure you can have it there and then uh, I just filled up with the, the I filled up the entire data with <clears throat> uh, me and uh, here we have a process code to, to kind of discretize or minimize the number of options to have uh, if you have a continuous variables it's better to kind of make them a categorical or change them and categorize them into two or three labels so let's say children's under five now children's under five means uh, the number of children's uh, that are in the house within the age of five and this the, the, and this woman like give has given birth and at the time of giving birth the the, the, the mother already had number of children's and actually, on real data, we had around nine, uh, like nine, nine childs who are under five, and still the mother has given birth. So these are things that you should kind of consult the experts and things. Now the best, the the best thing to have is have only one or two or three childrens. Uh, while having uh, while having a child and the justification here might be like uh, if there are lots of childs in the house enough care might, might not be given for a child uh, breastfeeding might not be given and etc things so these are the things that you have to consult and research and come up with uh, as a martial learning engineer and then i plotted a correlation a correlation matrix uh, of the of the entire project of the entire data set, uh, this is just a simple idea. Uh, of course, this is a multivariant uh, multivariant idea. I don't know. And this is bivariant, and you can of course do univariant analysis. Now, after having all this, uh, we'll be uh, formulating the causal graph. The causal graph to, to formulate the structure that I've shown you earlier, uh, I used, we can have two kinds of things or two kinds of ways. Now we can like structure the, the we can build up the structure by uh, expert opinion. Uh, I think, okay. Uh, okay, I think there has been, uh, I didn't save it, but since I, uh, for this uh, demonstration, I haven't uh, used an expert opinion here, since the paper is pending, I'll be showing you only the Nutiers algorithm. The Nutiers algorithm also is also embedded in the causal links library that I've showed you earlier. Uh, so now, now the question here is, you may come up with a graph, with any kind of graph that you kind of estimate, and you want to know uh, if that graph is actually correct or not. And the only way to provide or to kind of uh, say it's it's correct is uh, by assessing the stability of the graph. Uh, sorry, just to check, you can hear me, right? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, okay. perfect. Uh, so, to, to to assess the stability of the graph using notiers. Now, let me show you how notiers just works. Uh, we have a pro from pandas uh, API, uh, which was provided by. Okay. Uh, which was provided from the causal mix library that I used and it's used from the structures, uh, not its algorithm and using that, it will take it from, from the pandas, in general from the pandas. Now, 
the first step, which is like compiling it from the expert opinion was done by this structure module. But for now, uh, we will be only using the from pandas or using the notice. So, uh, when we get back, so you'll be providing it with the data and you can have multiple things uh, that can be uh, added here. But for my case, I just give it, uh, you, you just give it a data and kind of uh, parent nodes that can't be uh, directed to. So by changing the number of data that you give and kind of see uh, the stability of the graph, you can reduce or you can, you can see your structure is efficient with this. Uh, since I've been giving it 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, and 90%, and 100% of my data, and it has come with, it has come up with some kind of, uh, uh, some kind of like, uh, con uh, you know, matrix, uh, we can say that the model uh, or the structure is correct. Now here, uh, after giving it, uh, after giving, after giving it the data, uh, we'll be having our causal structure or the structure that we think we will be having. And this is a function that's going to be, that's going to plot the, 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 the graph and it will uh, take a threshold as, uh, as kind of uh, an input. Now we can, we can of course increase uh, the threshold with which two variables kind of connect. Uh, so I have increased it to 1% and we uh, lots of things. This is entirely connected. Since this is going to be 0%, everything is connected to everything. Uh, but if we upgrade or if we increase the threshold, uh, some things are going to be removed. And as you can see, for died for died for died child being uh, like living in rural urban or breastfeeding or children under five are directly affecting it or we can see for, we, can, we can reduce from the structure and we can also upgrade one percent or 0.1 percent there and we can see <clears throat> another like the stru other structures uh, like removing so this is going to be your manual work or the work that you'll be doing so that the graph actually makes sense. So for my case, I I went to a threshold of 0 0.3 and this was the structure that I got. So this is this structure or this structure is has been built uh, using the not here's algorithm of the causal mix like library or API. So uh, then I just stopped since if I, when I add uh, 1%, the diet has been like uh, wiped out. So this is what I think is mandatory. Now, and then I went, I, I went to do the same thing with 60% of the, the, the sample data or the selected data. And I've done, have done the same thing and to see the similarity between uh, the, the, the first plot or the first graph and the second graph, I have done the Chagarant similarity, which is, uh, I think this is a formula. This is a formula, which is A intersection B divided by A union B. Uh, we ideally want to have uh, two sets in, uh, intersect, in, intersecting uh, one another. So this is the simple, it's just a simple uh, code. It will be just, uh, getting the lengths of A intersection B divided by the lengths of A divided plus the lengths of B minus A intersection B would give us the jacarant similarity and based on this, this can be your evidence. This can be your evidence that your, your, your uh, table or your structure is working good. So for my case, uh, by like the 60% uh, by the 60 percent, I was able to kind of get uh, the current similarity of 
29 percent and when i when i kind of removed threshold from the sm2 uh, i was able to kind of get a jacaran similarity of 44 percent and same goes to <coughs> after removing like the 30 percent uh, i went to have around 92 percent which is which is like good now you will be doing the same thing for 70 80 and 90 percent and of course the 100 percent and this whole thing this whole thing is to be uh, to be to make sure or to provide an evidence that your structure is stable so upon having this structure okay i think right something yep yeah been mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, I have just one question. After using the Jacquard Simulant Index, yep. uh, how is it, how is it uh, benefiting you or how is it helping you uh, make uh, the decision on the stability? That means uh, it's, it's just telling you how close the two graphs are, right, if I'm not mistaken? So yep. how is that helping you? calculate uh, the stable uh, graph or uh, reach to the stable graph okay that's that's a good question now i wish i had uh, uh, the structure built via like experts opinion uh, I, had, I had it here uh, so what what my answer is going to be for that is if you have uh, an experts who are going to kind of build that structure and from from the notiers you're going to have another structure and you'll give, you'll be like checking checking out the two parts or the two graphs and you will say for the for the expert opinion no no i have, I have this kind of structure uh, and maybe we're we're missing this thing so uh jacaran similarity would help you kind of get let's say if it is a lot of uh, if it's a lot of uh, data or like attributes uh, you'll be you'll be tired or kind of to to see which data is going to which data and which data is going to be which data so the best way to have it is by using jacaran similarity does that make sense um, but uh telling me that uh, uh, we'll be using the jacarand uh, similarity index to compare it with uh, uh, the expert, uh, uh, expert opinion uh, the the graph that's made using the expert opinion uh, if i'm not mistaken that's what we did. we'll be just using it to compare the one we got from the algorithm and the one we got from the experts and, uh, just figure out uh, how they differ. Is, is that it's a benefit or? Yeah, uh, I think the connection might be a bit kind of uh, off. But yeah, yeah, I mean, you got it. Like the it's just a proof that two graphs uh, have some percent of similarity. This is just uh, this is just a good provider proof, and these graphs might be uh, built by different data sets, uh, different ingestions of uh, different size of a data set or different portion of a data set. The result, or you may also have an expert opinion who is going to actually build another graph. So, either ways or either kind of uh, in either kind of uh, ways. You'll be, you, you should be using Jacaran's uh, similarity index to, to show that two, the two of the graphs are kind of similar or have this percentage of similarity. Okay, so when we reach to the stable uh, version of the graph, the Jacaran similarity will be much closer to one. Is that what yeah. you're looking for? Yeah. Uh, what will be? Uh, in order to reach to the stable graph. I, uh, I think I understand that uh, yeah. Yeah. is just 
telling us how close two graphs are. So yep. what will we do? Just to that uh, stable graph. For example, you've classified the uh, data sets uh, into portions, and then you're comparing the different graphs generated. Yep. So what in, in each of those uh, graphs to reach in the yeah, that's actually, yeah, 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 I understand. That's a good question. Uh, so the, 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 I have applied causal inference for two projects and uh, <laughs> with a very good coincidence, uh, my graphs were kind of going to stability, uh, but of course, as you suggested, or as you asked, uh, had I kind of got a jacaran similarity, who is going to have different uh, or something that's going away from one, what I will be doing is kind of, uh, okay. That's a good question. Maybe I'll uh, come up with answer and uh, I'll provide you with that. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank okay. you. Uh, so we will have uh, this, the, the structure built as this, uh, and as a proof, as a, <clears throat> as a proof we can have a jacaran similarity. Uh, and for me, I had got uh, one, which are basically, uh, the structures has been has got to stability. Now, for after having the structure, uh, will be we want to kind of get the conditional probabilities or the, the build up the Bayesian network. So for the Bayesian network, I used the causal links network uh, and provided it with a, with a jack with a, like <clears throat> the structure that I had. And after that, uh, this is just a structure. Now we have to kind of uh, train the, 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 the Bayesian network so that it could give us, uh, or it, it, it can classify if the person is dead or not. Now to have, the, to have a training session or to have a training, we should kind of split our data into training taste and using the training, uh, I fitted my Bayesian network using the train data. Now, this fit dot not, uh, fit underscore node underscore states uh, API used the entire data. This is us to kind of provided it to provide the Bayesian network as uh, the entire possible values of uh, each columns. But for the training, of course, we'll be providing it with uh, train data. And using that train data, uh, we can, uh, we, and then we'll be having the Bayesian network fitted. And then using the Bayesian network, we can basically predict the, the likelihood of uh, the, a child being dead or alive based on the history of the mother. Now this is this is going back to martial learning, of course. Now we want to do uh, like interventions and other things. So for that, <clears throat> of course, my Bayesian network should be uh, provided using some kind of metrics or model performance. So for that, I use the classification, the causal mix evaluate method, to do a classification uh, report. And for that, for the for the for the child who are alive, it it, it gives me a precision of this much percent, a recall of this much percent, and an if one score of this much percent. Same goes to the diet. Uh, for the diet, of course, this is small since the data is uh, very unbalanced. And the average accuracy and uh, macro average, of course, are provided here. So this is going to be a proof that my model is good. Uh, now, <clears throat> uh, we have finally, we have reached to a Bayesian network, uh, which is going to be efficiently predicting 
but since we, we, we want uh, an intervention and do calculus, we'll be providing it uh, to an inference engine or we will be initializing an inference engine. Now, in this inference engine, uh, we'll be having marginals or marginals or like uh, marginals of something uh, given some some kind of query. Now, for the first case, let me let me let me go like uh, in detail here. So this is my Bayesian network, and I queried it uh, to a marginals, and I want to see the marginals of died. So this is basically giving me uh, the percentage of uh, children who didn't die, and this is providing me the percentage of children who died. Uh, this is of course same to machine learning. Uh, yeah, so just as a validity, uh, we can have the structure, which is the, the data earlier, divided by the shape, which is around 0.91, and the probability of uh, children who didn't die. One is didn't die, is a, no, one is died, and that's around uh, zero, around 8%. But from the training, uh, since we have cut down a little bit data, it's around 91% for the children who didn't die and 8% for the children who died. And this is almost similar with this. So the, 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 the query or the, the marginals are going to be like the probabilities. Now, let me give you one interesting thing that you can do here. So uh, you can have a query for a specific column and the value for that column. Now for this, let me give you the context for children under five or the number of children that are under five. Uh, I provided it with the entire thing with one and I queried, uh, I queried like the inference engine and put it here. So when I see the marginals of the diet, we have around 91% for the, the, the child who didn't die and 0.81% for the child who died. Now, had I done it, like had I given it zero for the children under five, it would have been improved to 92% or 1% increase would have been made for the number of children who didn't die and I could have decreased a 1% uh, number of children who died. So this is um, like the thing that you, that most public uh, most public institutes want. This is the insight that they want. And this is uh, providing them by like the matrix that you previous, previously stated on the classification report. That's your performance of the model and of course, this uh, inference engine is kind of uh, limited to uh, the data that you have. So this is one of the queries. Now, what another interesting thing that we can do that Cosa Nix uh, allow us to do is, how about percentage, let's say, for the same thing, uh, we have a do intervention uh, kind of API to which, of which we will be providing the column and we'll be kind of giving it the possible options, the possible options zero and one in the percentage of or the percentage coverage of uh, the number of people or the probability of the people. So uh, for this specific case, Firstly, we queried uh, the, the number of children who died, which is around 91%, and this is just a repetition, 0.83%. Now, had I done uh, an intervention and had we have the number of children who are under five in between the range of uh, zero and two to be uh, 0.5, and the reverse or more than two, uh, 0.5, we would have a reduction of 91%. Uh, we would have a reduction to 91.8%, uh, although this was 91.6%, which is around 0.2%. Uh, same goes to a reduction in the number of children who died 
to be from 0.83, uh, from 8.3 percent to 8.1 uh, percent. Now, had I increased the number of children, the number of genders under five, or the same variable to 0.7 percent or 75 percent, uh, and minimize those to 25 percent, we would have get this this volume. And had I reached uh, 100 percent, of course, it's as the same as the previous one. Uh, we, would, we would have uh, reached these things or this this value. Now these values uh, might be easy to kind of see it, see it here, but if we consider uh, a real data, especially if you kind of Google how my, how many people are born in Ethiopia per day, uh, you can actually see or you can actually uh, calculate the number of children you could save by imposing this. Uh, by imposing uh, this intervention in kind of maybe teach the peoples to to have uh, lots of children uh, to have children's gap uh, or to don't have multiple children's so that they can give enough attention for the children that they have or etc things so these are the things that you can kind of play with uh, i don't know uh, if i have maybe run fast uh, does that make sense or any questions so far? Hello? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. I think maybe there's no question, so they are still internalizing. <laughs> yeah, okay. Ah, cool. There it is. Cool. Okay, uh, so this is this is like how I implemented it and the value that it has uh, given, the, like knowing the causal inference and actually implementing it, trying to implement it, might give you this kind of essence. This is just to give you a highlight. So I guess this is how I implemented it on the sample data set. And finally, uh, for your project, I may be kind of giving you some tips as to kind of, uh, I don't know uh, if you want, but there, there are, of course, different libraries, but I recommend you to use causal links uh, since this is very easy and, uh, sorry, right here. This is developed by McKinsey, which is one of the biggest companies in the world. So they will have a big investment and it's more or less reliable and you can easily validate it. So I recommend you to do this, but, but of course uh, you, can, you can go and explore different kinds of modelings. And the second uh, thing that I'll be kind of recommending you is to have initially an MVP, just go to, up to the final or up to the, the, the final state, have a structure and kind of provided it to some kind of uh, Bayesian network and fill it up and kind of have some metrics and start uh, doing interventions. Now, if that doesn't make sense, and then you go up to, the, the, to, your, to your discretization or kind of categorization in you may have kind of missed some things so you'll be going back and forth uh, in this sense uh, thirdly I'll be giving you of course to apply martial learning techniques different uh, martial learning approaches and see the feature importance and the correlations and how they kind of differ from what we have or what the causal inference give you uh, and from the data set that you have, uh, I don't know, but I used around nine columns or nine features. Uh, I don't know uh, if you are working with another. Uh, so these are the features that I worked on. The diagnosis, the concave mean, the concave point mean, radius, forest, concave point forest, 
perimeter walls and these are the columns that i have worked at initially since the causal links uh, library uses kind of uh, is very resource resource intensive i recommend you to use uh, this thing uh, the only these columns instead of kind of trying to process the entire i don't know 28 or 30 columns so this is this is it uh, thank you for your attention any questions, please? Okay. Yep. Uh, okay, Titus. Oh, okay. Um, uh, thank you for the for the awesome presentation. Um, although I came a, bit, a little bit late, so I didn't like uh, catch what uh, was discussed earlier. So just a question, and maybe just a little elaboration on what transpired. Um, uh, the data that we have has several features. So are we like using the whole data set to compare to maybe um, infer on the, on the on the target or are we just like uh, using specific columns like one column and compare if it causes the, the, the targets or just like just a, a preview, just a preview of what we're supposed to do with the data, please. Yeah. Uh, like... The, the, the data that you have is uh, had around 30 or I don't know, uh, 20 something columns, right? Yeah. yeah. So even the causal links library uh, is very resource ex intensive, uh, not only like given that the data is huge, even with small data and you categorize your data, it's going to be very resource intensive. And for most for specifically my project that I have done last year, uh, my my computer was not able to process it. So what I had done is consult with uh, Yapi and come up with some columns, around nine columns that I've shown you, or maybe I will share you uh, this specific notebook via Anesthesia, uh, so that you just have an MVP, and if you're not happy with the performance of the model, uh, you can add columns. That's that's going to be adding you uh, any insights, or do anything that that you think is good, since anything cannot be perfect. Okay, we have questions. Can we get to the document? Okay, let me send you the. Uh, can get the document that you use to explain everything? Uh, do you mean like the, 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 the notebook that I've showed you now? Spain? Alamayo? Uh, yeah, um, I'm sorry that uh, I may share you some part of it since it's going to be like in uh, this is something that we are running to build a paper out of from, but I'll of course see you uh, the documentation. But as a reference, this is a good documentation. It, it will help you kind of have that mindset to to go to a documentation, to read a documentation, and uh, see how that can fit to your project. Okay, this is a question by book. How can we? How can we select those columns with what prompt? That's a good question. Now, this is uh, where most of the time machine learning engineering or data science spend their time for. You should be able to research and kind of go to different different uh, websites and different research papers and see what which columns are mainly affecting or which columns are uh, being collected to kind of uh, see or estimate or come up with a prediction for your model. So this is something that for this specific project, I will uh, provide you. Uh, I will provide you with what I have used, the columns, the nine columns. But for later on projects, you should be able to kind of refer to our research papers and see which columns are relatively uh, good for your performance of, for your modeling. 
etc. Okay, we Bien. Okay, and, uh, can you give us a recommendation on uh, of the resource uh, on uh, uh, graph stabilization uh, process? That means uh, uh, the Jakarta, the Jakarta. Uh, yeah. The answer for that kind of question. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I understand. Uh, I understand your concern, and the, I've seen your point. Uh, since I have like didn't uh, face such an issue, since most of uh, the time the stability has been like proved, and <laughs> has been like increasing. I didn't see that coming, but uh, there might be some tricks and maybe some things that we can see as to how to increase the stability or to measure the stability or to see, to evaluate the stability of the graph. Maybe by like adding uh, different columns that you have already cut down or by increasing uh, the, the, the possible categories and things. Uh, but of course, I'll research on that and I'll provide you or I'll uh, give you uh, some research maybe by the end of today. Okay, thank you. Okay, guys, uh, I think I have to go now. I have a meeting, another meeting. Uh, Anastasia. Okay, thank you. Thank you, William, for that uh, very informative session. I hope the train. I hope the trainees uh, learned uh, something or a lot from uh, the session. And uh, if there are no more questions, I think we can just end there. It's just much thankful. Much thanks for you to actually come in and share what you did and your experience um, with it at the moment. So, if there's nothing else, I think uh, we can just stop the recording and uh, end there. Thank you, Binim, a lot. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.